guys, uh, welcome back. So today we're going to carry on with the sleeper kit fitting instructions and today we're going to be doing the fuel pressure setting and this is all a mix of getting a, um, a good balance between these three part, uh, parts. So you've got your fuel pump which we supply which is regulated to 3 psi. You've got your Malpassi fuel filter bowl and your regulator so you can set the fuel pressure with this down to around about 1 psi and of course you've got your carburetor which is a, a Harley Davidson type um, SS shorty carburetor. So where do we start? So first of all hopefully you've got everything set up, you've got it all built uh, and maybe you've even had it uh, started. Importantly, you've got your fuel pipe fitted from your drain plug and your uh, carburetor just there, the little brass port. So that's where this uh, overflow pipe will run down underneath your engine, down to your stone guard, and then through there. It's really important that you make sure that that is secured and it's not just flailing around everywhere. Um, we'll come back to that later on. So, where do we start? Go to your uh, ignition, turn your ignition on, and when you uh, have fuel running through the system and it's primed up, you should hear the fuel pump stop. That's assuming that you've bought one of our fuel pumps from us. If you haven't, then I highly recommend them. Um, they are self-regulated, they'll stop pumping at three PSI, and they help this setup enormously. So turn your ignition on, and what you should see is that we've set it to around about 3 psi or 0.2 bar. Now at that you should be able to start your engine, run it and you've probably not driven it yet. So assuming you've got all of your, your timing set up correctly uh, and the engine starts, um, we need to start looking at uh, what's happening with fuel as you start to drive the car because it will behave differently. Um, at the moment you might not be seeing any fuel coming from the fuel drain um, so get out in the car give it a quick drive round and then come back and then look underneath the car and check for any signs of fuel that may be coming out of your overflow pipe now if it is you need to make an adjustment on your fuel pressure regulator so here we are the bug here we have a fuel pressure regulator and I've got one here as well to help me explain what you need to do so to adjust the fuel pressure regulator up or down all you need to do is remove the locking nuts keep those loose and then the little brass adjuster there uh, adjust this inwards if you want to increase the pressure if you want to decrease the pressure which is what we want to do we want to adjust it out. So we want to take that screw outwards. Um, and you want to be doing this probably uh, a few times just to check that you've got no fuel leaking from your overflow. So what we uh, suggest is that if you're running at the preset method that we've set it to on our rig, take it down to two PSI, take the car back out, have another drive, you don't need to go far. Again, come back and look for any signs of fuel from the overflow pipe. If again, you still see it, keep repeating that until you get down to around about one PSI. So just keep adjusting this out and locking it off until all you see from your fuel pipe drain are simply fuel vapors. When you get to that point of only seeing fuel vapors, and no physical fuel coming out of this drain pipe, then you're good to lock the fuel pressure regulator up and keep that set. Now you have a couple of options here. You can either leave the fuel overflow drain pipe fitted or you can fit a blank and remove the fuel pipe overflow and simply fit the fit the blank like that onto the onto the carburetor. Okay. Dead simple. 
Now, on this bug, I've set this one. This one is set to uh, nearly three PSI. And when I go out for a run at the moment, I will see signs of fuel. But if you can see just here, look, I've marked on this gauge where this stops overflowing fuel. And that's around about one PSI. One thing to be uh, wary of, uh, if you are just going to wind this out uh, to lower the pressure, um, just be careful because when you get to the end of the thread, there's nothing to hold it in. There's a little spring underneath uh, and that will uh, pop off and probably fly into your engine somewhere. So, so just be careful. Um, so like we say, just turn it down, probably one turn round take the car out go for a spin come back check for fuel it should be absolutely fine so in theory even if you get down to one psi of pressure through the eight mil fuel pipe that will provide 2.4 gallons a minute and that should be more than enough so even if you were traveling at 100 mile an hour at 10 mpg you would only need a gallon every six minutes or so um, the other thing of course is your fuel pump uh, that's always going to be pumping at 3 psi and always going to be uh, filling your, your bowl up so reducing your pressure to as low as 1 psi all that's going to do is replicate what's happening on the motorcycle and, uh, and obviously the carburetor is designed to be um, fed by gravity So there are another couple of reasons why uh, you might see fuel coming from the overflow pipe. So if you're in a hot country, for instance, uh, your vehicle's outside, uh, if you imagine a fuel can, you put a fuel can in the sunshine, even in some warm, you open up the, uh, the fuel can over time and it will release pressure. And that's because of heat. So in hot countries, the heat uh, can create pressure in your gas tank and all that will happen um, it will push fuel out of the carburetor out of the uh, drain hose onto the floor and that's something that they they often see on the harley davidson motorcycles uh, so it, it, it is a a little bit of a a problem i would say but in this case um, another another reason why we might see uh, fuel leaking from the overflow is because of the orientation of the carburetor so there we are so this is in the opposite orientation to how it's fitted onto a motorcycle so on a motorcycle it's fitted in this orientation with the air filter bolts here those three that you can see facing outwards now if you look at where the fuel overflow pipe fits it's on the side of the carburetor. In the fuel bowl, you've got fuel sloshing, uh, sloshing around. So as you're moving forwards and backwards and you're braking, um, you've got fuel moving around in there. Now on the car, or on the, the way that this is set up, it's in the other orientation, which means then that the fuel outlet is at the rear. So as you accelerate, fuel will be sloshing inside of the fuel bowl and coming backwards. As you brake, it will force it forward and as it forces it forward it can come out of the um, fuel drain so that's not particularly an issue and hence the reason why we supply a little black plug there so that once you set your pressure up correctly and if you look at our other videos and you check that your float height is set correctly and uh, everything is good with the carburetor and the float is loose there should be no reason why you can't block that up worst case is if there's ever an issue too much fuel will go into your uh, carburetor and it'll pop bang fart and smoke and it'll be just running too rich so you'll know the problem there'll be a problem anyway but yeah so that's how to set it up um let us know how you get on 